Okay, so today <clears throat> we are here to talk about another patron requested review. This one is The Alchemist, with Alchemist with a Y, so it kind of looks like the name of a metal band. And this was requested by Karkat Kitsune. And I think this one's good. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. So I should clarify that this book is the first in a series. It's uh, The Immortal Nicholas Flamel, I believe it's what it's called. And so there's other books in the series that are like Magic, which is also spelled with a Y, and uh, Physic, I think. And I do remember seeing a bunch of these uh, in the stores and such when I was a kid, uh, around the time they were first coming out. And actually at that time I was in the target audience for them. It just never really grabbed my interest. I wasn't that uh, into them. And reading it today, I can say that it is good, and had I read it back in, when I uh, was in the target audience, I think I would have f***ing loved them. Wait, no, I should, I, should, uh, I should censor that bit. I would have loved them, <laughs> is the point. Um, but, because it follows a lot of the same tropes and cliches as something like Percy Jackson does. You know, you have uh, two main characters who are just normal kids thrust into this world of magic, so we can you know, project ourselves onto them. Uh, they are subjects in a prophecy of some sort. They have these cool magic powers, so we can all just imagine, yeah, if I was here, I could go on adventures like that, you know. It's that sort of story, and I again, I would have really liked it. Nowadays, the prophecy and stuff kind of just makes me roll my eyes because I don't, I just generally don't like prophecies. Um, but you know, it's still a good book. So the plot here is that these two uh, twin siblings named uh, Josh and Sophie are in San Francisco one day, and they go to a coffee shop or bookstore or bookstore coffee shop combo, I believe, and it's run by this dude who turns out to be Nicholas Flamel, who is a famous alchemist who made the the elixir of life, so he's immortal. Uh, and then this other wizard breaks in, uh, his name is Dr. John D. Uh, he breaks in, he tries stealing the Book of Abraham, which is this book full of a whole bunch of important mystical spells and such, including the elixir of life. Um, and he manages to steal the book, but Josh and Sophie tear out a couple pages beforehand so he does not get the elixir of life. And basically they talk to Flamel a little bit and he admits to them, okay, magic and stuff is real. And also there's this old race, which we just called the Elder Race, and they ruled the earth before humans were around for many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. And now they're going to try and come back and take over. Now I will say right now that this book starts off with no time wasted. I mean, I think it's like less than 10 pages of just introducing Josh and Sophie in the store and then D breaks in and steals the book and then all hell breaks loose and things really don't let up until the last third of the book. Like, we have a few very short uh, episodes in the middle where things settle down and we really get a chance to know the characters. And that is a double-edged sword because, as I said, we don't really get to know these people until a little ways into the story. And even then, we don't uh, spend that much time on it. Like, Josh is the character that gets the most development, and I, I think they did a good job with him. Like, they it seems like they're going in a direction which would be kind of stupid, uh, but then they reverse it, and he, he seems like a better person. You know, without giving things away, it's just, okay, yeah, he is a good person. But at the same time, by just having, you know, constant action and everything, well, you know, you have constant action. It's, it's fun to read. Uh, there's a whole bunch of you know, chase scenes and fight scenes, and most of it involves the characters having to flee because the villains are so powerful. And that's a good thing because it makes the villains seem scary. And they are, and they should seem scary because this world also seems like really huge and old by introducing the Elder Races uh, because, as I said, they've been around for millions of years, it seems, way before humans even existed. Like, uh, they mentioned that they had an island homeland, which eventually became the basis of the legend for Atlantis, and, you know, it sank beneath the waves and all that. And that's, you know, that's something fairly standard for this type of story. You know, there was magical people who ruled the earth, and it was in prehistory, and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but in this, it's just so much older, and the pretty much every <clears throat> mythology around the world, whether you're talking, you know, Celtic or uh, Egyptian or Greek or whatever, those are all, they, they aren't all real, but all of those myths are based on legends of uh, 
the elder race. So like Zeus and Thor and all of them are just different interpretations of the same legend of the same people, and I think that's really cool as well. I've mentioned in the past that I want to read more stories where like all myths are sort of in the same world and they're all interacting with one another. That's partially why I liked the Last God of War game so much, because it's, it's basically that. And this one, it's not quite that, but it is a different interpretation on it, which I think is really cool. And the Elder Race, uh, from what we see, they are extremely powerful and extremely scary, so, you know, I just, I think they're cool. As for the characters, like I said, there's just not that much to them. Uh, you know, Nicholas Flamel is just the old, wise mentor who is fighting against evil and has been doing so forever and is trying to teach the main characters to do it. You know, that's a similar archetype we've seen a bunch of times, and they don't really do that much new with it. And I know this is part of a series, maybe he and the others get more development later on, in fact, I would, I would hope they do, but as of this first book, not really. But he does serve his purpose well, and I would say the same for pretty much all the other characters. You know, Dr. Dr. John D is just a villain. You know, he's out for something. They're, they're actually a little more mysterious about what he's doing. Um, he might just be working with the Elder Race, or he might just be working with a specific faction of them to do something else. It's, uh, again, I'm sure it's revealed later, but as of this point, he's just kind of the mega powerful magical villain who is after the characters because they have something he wants. Again, it's fine. And then Josh and Sophie, I talked about Josh a little bit, you know, he does get some development near the end and I'm, I like the direction they took him. Sophie is mostly just, you know, kid that got swept up in adventure and is part of a prophecy and has super powerful magic powers that almost no one else has. Because that's also important. The, the main characters in this type of story not only have to be normal kids pulled into this world, but they have to have super special, unique powers that almost no one else has. Or if they are powers that someone else has, then it has to be even stronger than everyone else. The characters aren't bad. I want, I want to clarify that. They're not bad. If I was a kid, I wouldn't think about most of this at all. Uh, but they are just sort of there to do their part in the plot. You know, they aren't really there to be characters and then their actions drive the plot. The plot is just there to give them things to do, if that if that makes any sense. And um, as for other complaints, um, the main one that I had throughout all of this is just that there is way too much description. Like, especially near the beginning when they're describing what characters look like, it feels a lot like those bad fanfiction scenes where, like, they'll spend two and a half pages just, just just describing what characters clothes and hair look like like it genuinely feels like that at a few points and i just i was reading that going okay bro slow it down uh and it gets better after the beginning after the beginning but still every time they introduce a new character it, it is like that and it just it feels silly and it feels a little stupid so i do have to mention that but really it's not that awful and overall um like I said, I'm a bit too old for this book and a bit too old for this series. Uh, had I read it when I was younger and I was, you know, looking for different stuff and my standards were lower, I would have fucking loved it. I kind of regret uh, not reading it when I was younger because I had plenty of opportunities and I just never took them. Uh, but I am glad that I eventually got to it. And one day I might go around and uh, read the rest of the series. Like, I can't do it right this moment because I just have so much other shit uh, coming my direction. Like, I'm trying to get through Battlefield Earth. Like, I'm, I'm working on the long review for that, don't worry. I'm less than 10% of the way through the book, though, so it'll, it'll, it'll be a while. But, you know, overall, The Alchemist, uh, really solid book. You know, if you're looking for something in the vein of, like, Harry Potter or Percy Jackson, and, you know, it's a fantasy story that isn't too mature, it's not super dark, it's just kind of classic kid's tale where good defeats evil, then I think you would enjoy something like this. Uh, if you're looking for something more mature, then yeah, you probably won't enjoy it. But overall, uh, thanks again to Karkat Kitsune for recommending this or requesting this. And thanks to the rest of you for watching. I'll see you later. Bye. Special thanks to all the patrons you see here, and a super special thanks to all my $10 and up patrons, who include... 
Oppo Savalainen, Alex Humba, Ashley Watson, B. Quinn, Brother Santodes, Christopher Quinten, Embis, Emily Miller, Evan Stagall, Joel, Carcat Kitsune, Madison Lewis Bennett, Mike, NB Star, Sad Martigan, Tobacco Crow, Tom Beanie, Topher Wheeler, Vacuous Silas, and Vevictus. And if you aren't a patron, then consider giving me money so you can get your name on here as well as early access to my videos and other stuff. And if you've watched this far, then thanks a whole bunch. Please like the video, comment on it, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already.